Okay, now we continue on with the rest of scene one. Uh, I neglected to mention here um, that after the death of uh, King Hamlet, young Fortinbras, so Fortinbras' son, um, is trying to recover the lands that his father, Fortinbras, lost to um, King Hamlet. Okay, maybe so they're taking, uh, now that King Hamlet is dead, young Fortinbras sees the opportunity to, um, to reclaim those lands. Okay, all right, so Horatio made his uh, short speech that highlighted some uh, Roman allusions, Rome, Julius, the Roman streets, Neptune's empire, um, and now the ghost comes again, okay? And uh, they talk to it, they tell it, stay illusion, stay here with us, um, speak to me, speak to me, do grace to me, okay? Um, if thou art privy to thy country's fate, which happily foreknowing may avoid, speak. Or if thou hast hoarded up in thy life extorted treasure in the womb of the earth, for which they say you spirits oft walk in death, speak. Okay, so tell us. Tell us what, what are you here for? What, what do you want from us? Um, what have you come with information about? Okay. And then the ghost leaves again very quickly. All right. And now the three of them are left to unpack this. Um, and... Uh, and we heard, um, and so as they unpack this, the day, it's we now know that we're nearing daybreak because the cock crowed. Okay, um, so and they the three of them come up with a plan, right? And they say, here's Horatio's advice, which is we're going to go tell young Hamlet what we've seen. Okay, um, and Horatio says that upon my life. This spirit, which was dumb to us, meaning it was mute to us, will speak to him. Okay? Um, and then we end with a question from Horatio. Do you consent we shall acquaint him with it as needful in our loves, fitting our duty? So we'll do our duty to the young Prince Hamlet. Okay? Um, and so we'll do it. All right? So notice then, a couple things we've learned in this first scene. One, there's this eeriness of this supernatural visitor, which now we know has come at least three times. It's come um, when Horatio and Marcellus saw it, and now, oh, excuse me, when Marcellus and Bernardo saw it the night before. Now it's appeared to all three of them uh, with Horatio in tow, and it appeared twice this night, okay? Um, and, uh, and now they're going to invite Hamlet to see it, okay? So we know that we're in Denmark, and we're, um, there's a dead king. And we also know that there's some sort of external conflict with Norway over... A battle between the two fathers, Hamlet and Fortinbras, and that now we have two sons, young Hamlet and young Fortinbras. Okay, so right there we have these kind of parallel royal families in Denmark and Norway. All right, so Act One sets that stage in terms of its eeriness of mood and in terms of this feeling of mystery and questioning. What is it we're seeing? What is it that's actually happening? What's going on? Okay? All right. 